Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where it's about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Flash. Though this is a great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I say great, but it kind of feels weird to say great when it comes to like a sad episode. The entire episode is dedicated to Team Flash mourning Frost's loss because the team is still such a fresh wound, but it's like, right, you are the city's first line of defense, so... Heroes don't necessarily get that grace period a lot of times because it's like, right, when you're needed, you're needed. So um, they go up against a bad guy this episode, Blockbuster, but uh, they kind of, it's not even that they, he, he like knocked them down a peg or two. It's like, no, they kind of took themselves out just because they were just off kilter. Everyone wasn't their best and Barry's struggling like what to do. Like, how is he supposed to tell everyone, you know, the kind of. You know, more and Frost while also still using that as motivation to keep going. Like, how do I, how do I do that? And so he gathered everyone up except for Caitlyn because they wanted to give Caitlyn her space while she's preparing the funeral and everything. And so Joe actually is the one who suggests that each and every one of them find something, some way to honor Frost in their own unique way. Because, you know, as her family, that's the only way they're going to be able to heal as a family. Because they didn't just lose, like, oh, she was a member of the team. She was a member of this family. So... I think Joe was saying that he was taking these particular like, was it, like art classes or something like that because Frost kept telling him to. And every time now he's finally doing it, he's like, he can almost feel Frost looking down upon him. And I thought, and I think that's such a beautiful element in this episode, how everyone handles it. Iris wants to write this uh, obituary for Frost, but she can't find the words. It makes you wonder, in, re in retrospect, if she ever had to write obituaries for anyone they've ever lost over the course of the series. There's certain angles you're probably like, they probably never could. Like, with the any whales that they've ever dealt with that they ended up losing, there was probably never an opportunity to really, like, write an obituary there. Because you still do have to keep a lot of stuff classified. Because, considering everything Frost did, she can't really acknowledge, like, everything Frost did. Because it's like, if I do that, she has to keep her connection to Team Flash secret, so... She ended up passing it on to someone else because she's like, right, I want someone to be able to write something objective. Because as so, being limited in what she can write, but also um, being too close to what she thought uh, impartial party, just be like someone, you know, just speaking the facts about Frost would do a good job. But Carla Redden is like, yeah, but it feels so cold and detached. Written by someone that didn't know Frost. But that's the thing. It needs to be written by someone, by, by Frost, because... Iris kind of, it was a situation of feeling like, it. I remember now, um, what Iris specifically said was that um, she didn't know Frost as well as she thought she did. It is that thing of, you don't get to know people as well because you're thinking like, right, I'm going to have all the time in the world. And, you know, Carla felt that same way. I mean, obviously her and um, Caitlin had their distances for a long time and then they made up and she's like, I almost made that same mistake with uh, Frost, but I didn't. So at least they've had this little bit of time to like, well, they've had time before now, but even more so lately, like where they really were able to bridge that gap even more too and uh, be in a much better space. And so Iris, having known Frost, uh, decided to dedicate, you know, a story to her and talk to all these different people whose lives were affected. It's like uh, a couple who are together now because of Frost because she ended up saving them during the uh, Bloodworks attack, and it's like so many other people were saved because of her. This guy uh, who was kind of a tagger now is able to kind of put on like a display, like a show, because Frost didn't turn him in. In fact, she kind of let him, you know, use his art as an outlet, and now um, he's got his own show that's happening. And even the uh, the prosecutor who was going to prosecute uh, Frost. Uh, she now wants to, she shifted over to wanting to defend Meta's now because Frost is like, no, you were just doing your job. If you want to like do help out a lot more, find a better job. And now she's defending um, a lot of Meta. So I'm sure her and um, Cecile kind of cross paths in that regard because Cecile now wanting to dedicate 25% of a fourth of her workload into honoring Frost in that way um, by taking on, you know, uh, those type of meta cases as well. So it was this beautiful thing of just, you know, getting to see, because most people would just know her as Killer Frost, even at um, 
uh, jitters, what is the drink called? Killer Frost. And Carla was like, right, it, it shouldn't be that. Because she's not Killer Frost. She's just Frost to everyone that knew her. Because she still held that reputation for a long time being Killer Frost. But it's like, she wasn't this killer. She was a hero that affected people in so many lives. Made so many people's lives better. Was there for people in so many ways. And let's honor and remember her that way. And the guy at Jitters ends up crossing out, you know, uh, walking, wiping away killer and just having frost which i loved as like right the kid flash and the vibacino um drinks but i, I thought that was kind of a, a beautiful thing then we have allegra and chester like getting into an argument about hummus it's just a thing of neither they were spitballing ideas about how they were going to honor frost but they couldn't come up with one so they're going back and forth back and forth and they um it got into a whole thing about like, well, you put hummus on the sandwich. She's like, I love hummus, but it's not a condiment. Ketchup, mustard. Now, those are condiments. Uh, this is kind of like a thing on its own. And I love that she's like, whoa, condiment king, which I'm like, does he not, does he exist in this continuity? Um, that asshole. Uh, once again, I, I just, I will always love uh, the Harley Quinn show uh, for like giving us condiment king and him being such an asshole. Uh, uh, regardless, I was like, hey, name drop. Um, once again, he might not exist. She was just probably saying that without n knowing. Either he it is a thing in this universe, maybe there's been a little winks and nonsense, like, that he exists. I'm not sure if he, like, exists in this continuity, but whatever the case may be. Uh, it's anyone that's never unclear, that is a, that is an actual DC villain. I don't know if he's specifically a Batman villain. He's basically, because, you know, once again, my introduction to Condiment King was people joking about years ago when someone joked about Kite Man and then Kite Man obviously eventually will pop up in um the Harley Quinn show and be such a lovable idiot. I don't know what he's like in the comics. What cuz I feel like that that iteration of the character it's its own thing, which apparently he's getting his own spin-off from that, which I think is pretty dope cuz you got to love Kite Man being the lovable idiot he is, but his arch nemesis is Condiment King. Um tensions and all that aside. Um they actually go to check up on Mark because he's kind of destroying the bar. In fact, he ended up freezing like half the bar. So they're actually, you know, Mark is, you know, acting out and kind of partying out just because it's his way of, you know, dealing with his um, sadness. And I love that he walks over to that couple. He's like, yeah, I get it. You're going out, enjoy yourself. That's fine and dandy until one of you dies facing off against a monster from an inter uh, interdimensional monster or something like that. And it's like, Ugh. it's like, yeah, it's one of those things of like, yeah, seeing a happy couple. It's like, oh, it's yeah, this is great. This is beautiful until it's not until one of you dies and the other one's kind of left behind. But um, Allegra and Chester then start arguing back and forth. And it's like, uh, oh, maybe they have fry oh, fries here. Oh, maybe they have. Hum it's like, oh, see this? condiments oh look it's ketchup it's mustard no hummus but mark calls him out it's like you guys aren't even arguing about anything it's just you're seeing things you guys are just doing what friends do telling each other your perspective on view on things and he says that frost did that she opened up his eyes and he got to see the world from her perspective her view and he just regrets never doing the same kind of um kind of returning a favor and um and that kind of made Allegra and Chester, uh, you know, kind of finally make up. I love that. It was this very heartfelt moment. And then he passes out from the booze, of course. And they realize, like, right, I'm sorry. It's like, yeah, we weren't just kind of arguing about nothing. So let, let's kind of figure this out together. Chester initially came up with idea, like, oh, let's, you know, just like they're doing, they did for Oliver at, like, the Hall of Justice. Like, he has the eternal flame. Let's make, like, eternal blizzard for Frost and put her suit in the middle. And I love that initially Allegra was like, is that, isn't that just a snow globe? And it's like, okay. But it's like, right, rather than shoot down ideas, let's kind of build upon it. And so this time, uh, they honored it in what is kind of their section where they honor people, which I had to, like, do a couple takes because I wasn't sure. I saw the mask and stuff, but I wasn't sure, like, who they might belong to. Obviously, this suit belongs to Nora, which has got to be weird for Nora knowing there's a, um, a memorial for her, but it's, like, a, a different timeline version of herself, so that's got to be a little weird. But then there's, like, I think the one beside that was Oliver's mask. I even think it said, either said Oliver Queen or it said Green Arrow. It might have said Oliver Queen just because Oliver was now publicly known as the Green Arrow, and beside that, it says Captain, I was looking, I was like, is that supposed to be Leonard Snarts, and it's like, it is, it's, uh, but it specifically says Captain Cold, I think, I was wondering if those were supposed to be his goggles, because I figured those would be people who have ties to, um, they would be people who've had ties to, uh, Team Flash, who are gone, and so, 
there's that. There's also, um, they gave, like, Frost OG jacket. She's, like, right at, uh, Allegra's, like, it made her feel like a hero. So they're going to forever immortalize it to represent her. There was a few other things in there. You see Ronnie's suit from, obviously, you know, when he was Firestorm, which has got to be a little awkward seeing that now, considering, like, you know, Deathstorm kind of used that a little bit. So that's got to be a little awkward. Um, then an, there was some other objects I couldn't place. And I'm, part of me wonders, like, could one of those be, like, the different wells? Could one of them... Because they've all lost plenty of wells because of everything. Then there's also another... There, there are two objects I couldn't see the nameplates for. So I'm assuming one would have to be for uh, Stein. I mean, not less the whole... Because I would, I would assume the Firestorm thing was more so a remembrance of, like, Ronnie, but not less it's supposed to be Ronnie and Martin. Because other than that, I'd say, like, the Wells are other people that they've lost. So, that's the only ones that immediately jump to my mind about who they potentially lost. Then there was an interesting one. I could not... It looked like a speedster suit. Specific... At first, I was like... Because I couldn't... I kept rewinding. I'm like, is that supposed to be Ezra's suit? But I'm like, why would they have that there? Um, I was like, no, like, I don't think it was, so immediately my brain was like, well, the only other person I can think of, I was like, not unless that's supposed to be Jessie's speedster suit. That's what I was, I was kind of wondering, like, cause she had, a, cause it seemed like it had like a, I don't know if breastplate would be the right, where it looked like it compensated for a woman's chest. It's kind of, at least from what I could tell of the suit. So it, like, I could be 100% wrong, but I was assuming, like, that was going to be, like, Jesse's speedster suit. But, like I said, I could be wrong. So, but I thought that was kind of um, a neat little area and, you know, their way of honoring um, Frost amongst, obviously, all the other heroes. Or, or a, symbol, a symbol will symbolizing her specifically and remembering her as the hero she was. And the other thing we had in this episode was Barry's way of honoring Frost. And... It was him checking off her list. It was basically a bucket list that she wrote uh, to be a symbol of a fulfilled life. So going like water rafting was one of them. Um, another one was, I think, swing dancing with, I want to say that said Judd Nelson was number three. Number two was attend a sword school, a samurai school in Kyoto. Obviously, the one Barry was working on, number four, being uh, make a snowman at the top of uh, Mount Everest. Another one was, what was it, um, learn how to uh, ice sculpt, and he made like a giant ice, uh, a giant snowflake, which I thought was beautiful. Uh, Another one was to get her art piece in the Louvre, which he sped it in. And the people there were like, oh my god, because we, we, we need one more piece. And it's like, oh, this is so beautiful. This is amazing. And I, th that, I thought that was beautiful. And and at the same time, the final uh, thing on the list was win a hot dog eating contest. And Barry ended up beating uh, Corver. And she's just like, all right, but next year we're having a rematch, match, Alan. Because I figured he'd win. He kind of cheated. I mean, he's not speeding. Because I was like, are you going to do it as a flash? I'm like, I figured you'd probably be cheating as that way. But he doesn't have to use his super speed. But he still has a high metabolism. An extremely ridiculously high metabolism to the point he can't even get high. So probably make, you would assume his body digests that a lot fat. You know, you know, but I mean, it still does seem like he's kind of like, I don't know whether he's having to fake it or whether he's like, oh, no, I really am stuff like even my super speed can't help with that digestive situation. Whatever the case, I would assume just because of the high man to have metabolism, his body would work like that. But regardless, I love that he won the uh, that and that's pretty dope. But despite everything, he thought completing the list would, you know, be his way of honoring her. But even now, it still feels incomplete. Uh, because Mark ended up talking about that for Frost, she ever did she never did anything uh, to win because she's like, yeah, like they won, they did like a tag team wrestling thing, and it's like we won, obviously, but like some kids, like they were out eating later on. At, I think she said, he said like a ramen shop, and they gave it to some kids because it wasn't about the win, it was about the experience. And that's the thing, like, Barry completed everything on the list, but it was just the experience of doing everything she wanted. So he has to remember, you know, all he has to do is remember what Frost would want. And it's like, yeah, Frost, like, she loved her family. That's what she cared about most. And 
I mean, she was literally made to protect Caitlyn, and it's like, that's something she would always want to do. And so Barry realizes what he wants to do. He's like, I have to do, I know what to do, it's just impossible. And, you know, Mark's like, what's impossible for the Flash? And it was talking to Caitlyn, because he said, he feels like he said all the wrong things first. Because it's that thing of, like, how do you really, like, you know, it's like, yeah, I've been through this, but you still can't really, you can't experience what's, because even though Barry's lost a lot of people, Caitlyn's loss is a very unique one and like he's never lost a sibling like she has and not just a sibling someone that was actually a part of you for so long and that ends up being something Caitlyn talks about she ends up putting away a lot of stuff a frost her artwork or taking it down and I even love that she has some uh um like I guess there's a band called Sick Kata which I feel like they've been referenced before but I'm like I was like seeing that artwork and everything for it I'm like I did a quick Google search and I couldn't find anything specifically saying sick Kata. So I think that is something specific to the Flash. So you, which is kind of weird to have like a band. But I mean, it's like, yeah, people make band titles out of any, like a lot of stuff. So I guess that shouldn't be too surprising that someone would name something kind of vaguely. Well, there is the bug, the cicadas, but it's also weird because in this universe, there was a villain named Cicada who killed a lot of people. So it's, eh, you know, it's weird like that, but still... Um, Caitlin was just kind of, you know, sleepless and just, you know, stuck mourning. Once again, it's a very unique experience. And Barry reaches out to her and she's like, right, there's no point of like closing a door on someone who could easily phase through it. And Barry wants to be there for Caitlin saying, you know, if she doesn't go to this funeral, she's going to regret it. And it's like, right, you knew Frost better than anyone else. What would she want you to do? And she remembers what Frost said to her a couple episodes ago. If something goes wrong... I don't want you to retreat away again from me or the rest of the team. And she realizes, like, right, Frost would want me to, you know, get up off my butt and kind of live my life. You know, and for her, you know, she, for so long, she's like, Frost was always like that voice in my head that just when um, other people underestimate, when I felt weak because other people told me I was, she was there, that voice that always kind of prep, popped me up. Like, Frost has always been a part of her for so long, even when she wasn't aware of it. And then once again, when they share the same body and she had Frost's voice in her head, and it's like, right. Um, she's like, but if I go to that funeral, it's going to be acknowledging that she's fully gone. And it makes it real. But Barry's like, she's. it is that beautiful thing of like, right. Um, as, as long as we remember the people we care about, and that ends up being the beautiful message this episode, and it's something, it's my perspective on life, I want to, I want to, it's, it's perspective I like to, I want to adopt more, is that no one ever, is ever truly gone, as long as we remember them, remember people, as long as we carry on what, you know, they brought to our lives, they are never truly gone, they are never truly lost, they will always be a part of us, and that's how we honor someone, by carrying them with us, and Barry says, like, right, um, Frost will always be with you. So at the at the um, uh, wake, you know, service, um, Caitlin tells some stories about Frost, and you know, and because of what Barry said, it's like right because of how selfless she was, uh, fighting tooth and nail for her uh, and for the people she loved, her family and friends. As long as we remember that, as long as we carry on what kind of frost brought into our lives, she is never, ever truly going. She will always live on with us in that way. And I thought that was beautiful. And the entire, everyone together, like in front of Frost's uh, casket like that, I thought was beautiful. And um, Joe uh, accidentally bleached the curtains when he was trying to clean them. And he's like, yeah, I had I was struggling because uh, Frost ended up stealing so many of my su uh, cleaning supplies for her art stuff. It's like, oh, I was wondering how she like Frost bridged her way across. It's like, oh no, people are finding like uh, gloves and all this uh, cleaning supply stuff all over the place. In fact, he's like, I heard that Wild Dog is using one of um, Joe's m mops as like a, a, a battle stick or something like that. And I was like, oh. A nice little wink and nod uh, to uh, Renee in that regard. I saw that. I thought that was pretty dope. And just you know, now Team Flash, they've all healed in their own way. And Caitlyn, uh, what she did, she fully pieced the team back together after this loss. And so they go off and they beat uh, Blockbuster. We don't get to see it on screen, but the team's ready for round two and because they're back ready to kick some butt. 
And obviously, like, there's that look on Caitlyn's face. I was like, mm, that seems a little... And she's calling someone up. I'm like, what's that about? She's calling up Mark because she plans on bringing back Frost. And you're like, oh, boy. This is going to get very Victor Frankenstein-esque. And I don't think that's going to be good. But it's like, dude... Because Barry will know firsthand the wanting to fix something like that because of someone you cared about. It's like, he's made that mistake before, you know, and, you know, uh, after losing his dad. And once again, he created a flashpoint and then, you know, the effects and what kind of effect that's had on the timeline, him trying to fix it. It's like, life is, it's not the easiest thing, but you do have to let go but also, it's like, despite all that she said, she isn't willing to let her sister go. It's like, keeping her inside, remembering it isn't enough. It's like, I'm going to bring her back, and she's going to get Mark's help. Because um, she ends up taking, it seems like she borrowed a lot of equipment, and it's like, right, she's going, and you're just like, oh boy. Because I don't know whether she's going to try and, like, clone Frost's DNA and make a clone, or or what. That's, when I just get the feeling like that's probably going to go bad, and... Now they're probably going to end up bringing back a Frost that isn't their Frost. They might end up bringing back Killer Frost instead of Frost. So, I my immediate thought was like, I was like, you don't think Caitlyn's going to try and turn herself into Frost? That kind of almost mimic them sharing the same body again. Like, I didn't know if that's what she was going to kind of do. That's where my mind immediately went. But no, it seems like she's just going to straight up bring Frost. Like I said, I'm thinking more like a cloning process. But it might just be like a, no, I'm going to resuscitate her body once again very directly uh, Frankenstein-esque wise, but we'll, we'll see. It's just uh, bringing that to dead, you know, using that allegory, uh, I'm using that analogy of like uh, Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster does not end well. And, you know, who you might bring back and Frost might end up resenting the fact that you brought her back and what bringing back might bring being brought back might have turned her into. So there's that element to it. And then there's the stinger at the end of the episode, which I love that uh, that person who works for the citizen, she still hates. It's not like dislike. She hates Allegra. She's like, yeah, I'm so glad to have you back. And it's like, oh, like, didn't, um, well, I heard Allegra did a good job. And she's like, who'd you hear that from? It's like, ooh, right. Because her and Allegra still have beef from that episode. So it's like, yeah, that, that hasn't gone away. And yeah, that's still unresolved. And I guess that's still going to be something Allegra's going to have to deal with in the future. Uh, I like that they haven't let that go. It's not like, oh, that's resolved. It's like, no, that that, that issue's still uh, bubbling at the surface. So I thought that was fascinating. But um, she also brought up the whole thing of like, right, I know Frost worked with the Flash, but we saw that the Flash was working with other people. So shouldn't we investigate who they are? It's like, well, because they're still kind of, because Frost is the one, obviously Frost and Vibe were the ones that like, the ones that were typically more out in the field with Barry, so... I guess Allegra's gonna more so fill that void. I guess her and Cecile may be going for. We'll see. Um, so, it's like, right, shouldn't we investigate them? It's like, yeah, I'll keep that in consideration. It's like, yeah, they're not really superheroes. They're kind of out as themselves. They don't have, like, a get-up and stuff like that. They don't have a costume. They don't have, like, a mask. So, it's kind of like, yeah, that's gonna be interesting covering that up, you know, so, we'll see, but the moment, um, that person turns back around, Iris is gone, and we see the trickling of, like, so, we've seen her make other people disappear, and now she's disappeared herself, um, I mean, to be fair, she kind of did that, uh, a little bit before Tinya ended up, like, trying to, like, use her powers against her, so luckily she was able to put herself in the still force in that time, but we'll see what this ends up being, uh, quite a stinger to have after such a, you know, an episode like this, but, uh, we'll have to wait and see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of that, uh, but really that's all I'm going to talk about, to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it, good day, and goodbye.